So, wonderful. How to meet genuine swingers with me, Rosie Kay. If you haven't met me before, or if you're not sure who I am, my name is Rosie Kay. I am an open relationship coach and an expert in ethical non-monogamy. This is what I've been doing for a few years, and I've been in the swinger lifestyle for about 10 years. I am a lot older than I look, people. So, let's get started. How to meet genuine swingers. So, I kept being asked the same question by so many people over and over. Hi Rosie, how can we meet genuine swingers? And with this in mind, this is why I wanted to make this workshop because I was getting, when I first started swinging, I was getting really frustrated with having my time wasted and with meeting people who would then text and text and text and flake or people who would continuously ask me for pictures or, um, you know, kind of hound me for pictures and stuff and it would never go anywhere. So I definitely understood um, where people were coming from when they said they wanted me to make this workshop. Um, it is really disappointing when you're met with time wasters. It's really disappointing when you're hoping it leads to something and you never actually get anywhere. And sometimes when you've paid your money for a site or for a club or something and you're still met with time wasters, it can be even more disheartening. And I didn't want you guys to go through what I have gone through. So during this mass class, you are going to learn what are the most common red flags when connecting with people online. We're going to talk about how to spot swinger time wasters, and we're going to talk about where and how to meet genuine swingers, because there are a lot of places that swingers exist. There are a lot of places that swingers appear online and in the flesh, in, you know, in clubs, but a lot of those people, they're not actually genuine. So that's the aim of tonight's session. So what red flags are there to look out for when meeting swingers so as i said you are being asked for pictures and videos before any trust has been established and if you're already already in the swinger lifestyle you will know that trust is a major issue for swingers we do not like to feel like we cannot trust our play partners or people we're talking to so if you're being asked for pictures or video way too early on in a conversation or an interaction then um, for me, that is a massive red flag. Um, another red flag to look out for, oh, sorry, one second, is that you're made to feel bad when you don't send these pictures or explicit messages. This is another technique that people kind of use. They kind of try and guilt trip you into it and they make you feel instantly bad when you don't produce the goods. This for me is a massive red flag because it just shows me that one, they're not, respect to, they're not respectful of you over a text or over an email or over a chat. So they're probably not gonna be respectful of you in the flesh. So for me, it's a massive red flag to look out for. Um, you know, even if you do like to send pictures or nudes or explicit shots, as some people do, you should refrain from doing so so early on because you're allowing that other person or those other people to have that little bit of kind of element of control over you. And for me, that's not right. That's not what being a genuine person in the lifestyle is all about. Um, you know, if you are being asked for pictures, you're being asked for videos and you don't feel comfortable by sending them, all you have to say is, look, I or we, we don't feel comfortable sending pictures or videos unless we've met up with somebody first. We don't feel comfortable sharing those type of things with people who we don't know. Um, and that's all you have to say. And this sends a clear message that you expect a little bit more investment, a little bit more trust to be established before you go through the motions of actually uh, joining in with their request. Um, so another one is um, you have to really look at the language that people are using, because if it's a swinger couple, then chances are they will use language such as um, us and we and together. Whereas if they start using language such as I, you know, I did this and I want this and I want, well, that, that to me, that sends a clear message from them that they are probably... Uh, either not used to doing swinging with their partner or that they're actually a single person. Uh, swinger couples are very conscious of the language that they use because they want to portray an image of a couple, of a joint partnership, of a respectful partnership that you can trust. 
they are really conscious of using language which establishes trust and communication and honesty. So they don't use language which is disrespectful of one another or disrespectful of that relationship. So again, you should really look at the language that people use um, because it can be quite a good insight into the actual kind of behind the scenes situation. Another red flag is they don't give you a proper answer when you are asking to meet. I think this has happened to everybody in swinger life and regular life. They give you a maybe, they give you a let's see what we're doing, they give you a possibly. They never really seal the deal. You ask them, are you available to meet? You ask them, would you like to join for a group chat or join you know, a WhatsApp chat group or whatever it is? And they're always sketchy with it. There's always an excuse. This for me is a clear red flag because if they can't be honest with you and they're not willing to kind of invest, um, and give you a proper answer, then it's never going to go anywhere for me. So do be wary of that as well. Um, another red flag, of course, and I think everyone, or at least women will know where I come from when I say this, is men, particularly who brag about what they've done and who they've been with and what parties they've been to. And if they brag and they brag and they brag, then that for me is a big red flag because they are overcompensating for a real lack of experience. Now, I know I sound like I'm generalizing. I don't always mean to. But again, in regular life and dating life, if a person has so much to say, I've done this and I've done that and I've played with so and so, chances are they haven't done that at all. Now, very often people who are quietly confident in what they enjoy and who they've met and where they've been, they don't have to overcompensate and brag. So again, just be just be conscious of what it is people are saying to you, because um, it is a red flag for me when people feel the need to overcompensate in that way. And, and another red flag is, of course, a group chat that you set up, but one partner is always unavailable and they can't join. Um, this is a huge one and it's, it's, um, it's one that we all have experienced as well. You set up a group chat, you set up a kick chat, one partner can't join, yet the other partner is always there. It's because the other partner essentially doesn't exist or doesn't know. So again, if you're met with this, um, knock it on the head because that other person is never going to materialize, essentially. So how to deal with these swinger time wasters? As I said, if you're being asked for pictures, but you don't feel comfortable sending them, simply respond by saying, look, I or we, you know, we love picture messages, we love videos, but we only like sharing them with people we trust, with people we've met up with, with people who we've perhaps had a, you know, a, a Zoom call with or a WhatsApp chat with, because we don't feel we can trust you. Again, if they overstep the boundary and continue asking, knock it on the head, they're just going to waste your time. Um, another way to deal with swing of time wasters is, of course, ask for a video call. Ask for that little bit of investment. Ask for them to meet you halfway. It's not too much time. It's not too much effort to have a video call. We all have access to this these days. So before you carry on sending more messages, before you carry on meeting, kind of wanting to meet with people and pursuing them, uh, suggest that video call. And if it doesn't happen and it doesn't happen, then it's not going to happen. There's no point you carrying on with your pursuing of them. So on the same note, don't chase them. If they want to meet you or if you've met them um, and they disappear on you, then let them essentially. I know how it is when you chase after somebody. We've all been there. We've all done it. But chasing after people is never going to yield you the results that you want. Even if you've met somebody, you've played with them, you've had a great time, sometimes they will then ghost you. This has happened to me on numerous occasions. I've met a couple, I've had a great time with them, we've all connected, we've had an amazing time playing, to suddenly be blocked and never speak to them again. And the only thing you can do is accept it and move on chasing people and if you're having to put in more and more effort and they're not being met halfway knock it on the head because essentially um it's not going to go anywhere um you know you don't want to waste your time on swingers who aren't on the same page as you because there's a lot of other people out there who you could be meeting so just don't even bother um <coughs> them, is what i say so why do swinger couples flake 
So for me, I believe the cyber world is a lot more comfortable for them and they, you know, they don't feel able to talk openly with other people about what it is they would like to experience. Very often people are very apprehensive and they're very fearful and they're simply not ready to take that step into the real world, but they don't know how to communicate that with others. Perhaps they've a point in their relationship where they've discussed it and they, they're on the edge, but actually making that step is a step too far but they don't know how to communicate that to other people. So instead they flake or perhaps there's still emotions that they need to address. Perhaps there's things which are going to come bubbling up and, you know, right before they're due to meet for a date, something happens, somebody says something and they're just not ready. But very often it's us, the genuine swingers, who suffer for this because they don't communicate. Um, I know it's frustrating when swinger couples flake and it is quite disheartening. Um, but that's you know there's not an awful lot you can do about it you just have to again accept it and move on and accept that they're not the right people for you so um where to meet swingers I'm just going through this So where to meet swingers? Um, we all are familiar, or maybe you're not, um, with the online swinger dating sites, such as Fab, there's Adult Friend Finder, um, and there is the, so there's Fab, which is a free site, and there's Adult Friend Finder, which is a, um, a almost bordering on porn, not safe work hook hookup sites. And you'll notice now that I've said where to meet swingers. I haven't said where to meet genuine swingers. Now, fab is fine and people do use it, but there's a reason that there are so many time wasters on there. This is because it's free. You can be anyone you want to be on fab. You don't have to invest an awful lot of time and money into it. Recently, I did a bit of an investigation. I did a bit of a deep dive myself and I made a profile um, and just to see what it was like, how easy it was for me to kind of slip in there and go um, incognito, The it was shocking, to be honest, guys and girls, it was shocking. Um, the amount of messages I received, the pictures, the video, everything. It was, I, you know, I'm an experienced swinger. When I make a profile, I make, you know, I, I make a lot of noise about I'm experienced. This is what I like. This is what I want. This is what I expect, all these things. I didn't, I put myself in the position of a single woman who's never been on a dating site before. So I really wanted to experience that. Um, it was very eye-opening. Um, so yes, I was able to meet swingers, but whether they were genuine or not, it was very hard to tell. So another place you can meet swingers are in swinger clubs and at house parties that again, you've randomly found online. Perhaps you're not sure where they are. Perhaps you're not sure um, you know, who's gonna be attending, who they're headed up by, how they're organized, but you've seen that there's something advertised online. Very often people get in contact with me and they say, Rosie, we've seen this party online or Rosie do you know about such and such party online and it's like well nobody's ever mentioned it before I don't know who the hosts are I don't know the location and if I don't know about it then chances are the person who's wanting to attend won't know about it so again yes you will meet swingers but what those swingers will be like and what experience you will have leaves little to be desired because there is no information about them. It's just somebody saying, we're having a party here. It may be a scam. There may not even be genuine swingers there. Um, so again, yes, there are these parties and events, but it can be really hard to gauge what type of uh, interaction you're going to get. Uh, another place which you can potentially meet people is uh, social media. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Now I know I am huge, well, I'm getting huge, I should say, on my Instagram, on my TikTok. Um, my social media is growing. And yes, people do all, you know, that people do connect on there and they do talk to each other. But it's really important to remember that all you see on social media is this, I don't know if you see that, this much of your very best life. So yeah, you may see a single person or a couple or whoever it is, you don't know whether that person's genuine. You don't know whether those pictures they're posting are their own. And sometimes, again, people will reach out to you and say, do you want to do X, Y, and Z? Do you want to meet up? Do you want to, you know, 
Do you want to come here? Do you want to go there to this party? All you're seeing is a very small snapshot of who they are. Because again, you can be anyone you want to be online. So yes, you can use social media to find singers. Whether they are genuine people, it's hard to tell. There's no real way of telling um, who you're meeting online. So another place is, of course, swinger communities. There are swinger communities uh, both online and in person. However, it's really important to remember that um, very often, again, anybody can join these. Anybody can put in their own two pence. Anybody can kind of... Um, submit what you know their thoughts their opinions and sometimes those opinions are not particularly pleasant and if you're new to the swinger world or you've never actually been to a club or you haven't really met people it can be quite a um it can be quite an unpleasant experience sometimes i don't know whether people are familiar with things like reddit and quora uh, i do post to those and i have done in the past again anybody can join yes they are kind of moderated but they are really subject to that person's opinion they're not always genuine they're not always that pleasant so with this in mind where to meet swingers i'm now going to tell you where to meet genuine swingers this is what I'm all about, guys and girls. Let's not talk about those fakes. So genuine swingers, paid sites where members have to be verified, like SDC, like Swing Towns, there's other websites as well that are paid. Essentially, there's a really important formula that you need to remember. If a swingers website or dating site is paid or a club is paid or a service is paid, then chances are you will have more genuine members and genuine interactions because you are not going to pay a subscription fee and not actually use it, especially if it's a healthy amount of money that you're paying because people invest their time and their money into the things which are important to them if you don't pay if you have a free service if you sign up for something for free you get a level of investment back which is free people so many people ask me this they say why are there so many time wasters on fab because as i proved you can be anyone you want to be but if you're going to invest 25, 30, 40 pounds a month, which some of these sites are, you're going to make sure you utilize it and you're going to put on pictures which attract others and you're actually going to invest your time into it. This is why the same formula applies for all types of swinging. That's why very often the higher end clubs and the more you pay, yes, people are disgruntled, they have to pay more, but they meet more people with genuine intention. If you go to a club, where it's either £10 to get in or there's no entry fee for some people or there's you know very little investment, anybody can go, they let anyone through, you don't know who you're going to meet. You're probably not going to have the very best time. So that formula can be used and applied to all aspects of the swinger world. So in clubs and events, yes, you are going to meet swingers, but where are you going to meet those genuine people? Swinger parties and swing clubs that come recommended by other genuine swingers. The more you start swinging and the more you start me meeting people and reaching out to them, the more genuine people you interact with. This is something which happens to me all the time. I meet people who come completely different walks of life and it's amazing. They offer me insights and input and advice. Um, and you will meet genuine swingers when you uh, go to genuine clubs. So again, um, Social events that I have been to that I can recommend, you definitely will find genuine swingers there because I wouldn't recommend them to you if not. Again, house parties that I've been to, I've visited um, and that I've reviewed and that I can tell you about, you will find genuine swingers there. Uh, swinger communities such as, of course, the TKG Club community group, my online members area, which I am launching tonight, everyone. Uh, and this is for swingers by for swingers by swingers, headed up by me, Rosie K, swinging expert. Um, so moving on, let me introduce you to TKG Club, my members community built with genuine swingers in mind. Why did I start TKG Club? TKG Club was born out of a desire to, let me just move that, provide genuine swingers and those with an interest in ethical non-monogamy, a community where they can be surrounded by like-minded, authentic adults. When I first started swinging, I did not have a me. I did not have anybody who looked like me, who was from a similar background, from a similar, um, you know, 
aged to me with similar interests. There was nobody who I could actually relate to. So if you become part of the club for Genuine Swingers Only, it's a paid membership community, as I've said already, if you pay to be invested in something, then you get that back in return. If you invest your time and your money in something, then it yields results for you. It's a paid membership community, which means only people who are serious and genuinely interested in the lifestyle will join and will hang out. Uh, you can discover swinger clubs and read my party reviews where you can find out the biggest and best parties in the UK. Uh, you can find out how to visit them, where to find them, who they are for. This is one of those questions which I'm asked pretty much on a daily basis. How can I find swinger clubs? How can I visit swinger clubs? I have so much information on that over on TKG Club. I have roundups of parties I've been to, roundups of clubs I've visited um, by whether they're suitable for couples, for single girls or for single guys. It's all there and it's all waiting for you. Again, you can join me for my live workshops and hang out with other TKG Club members. You can join the live chat during the workshops and see who else is watching. And you can check out my calendar of events to, disco uh, to discover my up and coming workshops and my up and coming social events for people and book a ticket. This is something I can't wait to launch. It's going to be bringing all those genuine swingers together all under one roof so you can all mix and mingle. So how can I meet TKG Club to meet Genuine Swingers? You can look through the members directory and see who else is there. You can get chatting with them. You're all there for the same reasons. You're all there because you want to talk about swinging, you want to meet each other and you want to immerse yourself in the same community. That's why you're there. You've already made that step. You've already put your intention on the table. Uh, you can join my, um, again, you can start a chat with other members and you can get chatting and you can socialize. You can join in with the members hot topics and discuss uh, different aspects of the swinger lifestyle and you can share your own behind, you can share your own stories and also read my behind the scenes stories as well. There is nothing else like it online because nobody puts their name and their face to the swinger community like I do. Yes, there's swinger dating websites. Yes, there's communities. Yes, there's clubs. But there is nobody who puts their cards on the table and embraces and encourages all the people who are interested. There is only me who does this. And I know this because I started it myself and I have not met anybody else like me. So it's an exclusive and adult place where we can connect for real because I understand where you're coming from. It aims to bring together people to enjoy ethical non-monogamy and provide a safe space for self-expression, which is so important to everybody who is part of this community. It's the only place where you can hear about and be invited to my upcoming social events, again, for genuine swingers only. There's nothing else like it online, as I've just said, and it's where you can dive deep into the world of Rosie Kay and find out exactly what it's like to be this kind of girl behind the scenes. It's inclusive of all genders, sexualities and relationship dynamics. Whether you're first time swingers or you've been on the scene for 10 years, it's a supportive and genuine community. I did all the hard work for you because I know what it's like to be struggling to find people to connect with, to be struggling to find people to talk to, to be struggling to find your place. If you know, perhaps you don't identify as straight, you don't identify um, in a certain way. And it can be really hard to kind of find um, a level of um, uh, a community yeah, level where you can all feel accepted. And I know what it's like to be desperately looking online and unable to find like-minded yeah. people. I don't want anybody to struggle and go through what I went through 10 years ago when I first started swinging. So I've yeah, done the hard yeah, work thanks. for you. All you have to do is download one of these when you join TKG Club and start getting inspired. Uh, again, you get all the access to everything that's on the blog, all the behind the scenes, all the explicit material that I create. Uh, which is written, I'm going to say, it's not pictures and video. Again, and also you get my um, diary entry every week where I deep dive real behind the scenes, nitty gritty into what my life is like and my take on the world. This is something of a video podcast that I do each week as well.
Uh, this is a sneaky peek at the TKD Club community. Again, you can see here we've got members directory, swinger party guides, hot topics, story sharing, video diary and the workshops. So if you can join if you want to and be part of my genuine swinger community. Now, I did have quite a lot of questions that were submitted to me earlier in the day, and I'm going to cover those now while we still have time. So, so a question I was asked earlier, and I'm going to quickly bash through these while I've still got time, is there's a Quatch 22 situation for lovely people who are swingers, but due to their public profile or work situations, they aren't able to share. Um, they aren't able to make detailed profiles. Um, what, can they, what can you do to make sure that you know they are genuine and also how can they make sure they are not overlooked? So thank you very much for this question. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I think it's something which everybody will come across at some point. So you are quite right. There are of course people who don't share their profiles so freely due to the nature of their, their, their public lives or their personal situations. But in my experience, when I have met people like this, they have been more than willing to be up for a date, have a phone call, have a chat, have a Zoom call, because they know that they, they're gonna struggle to engage people with their profiles. So usually they then take extra steps to make sure they do present themselves as a genuine swinger. It is definitely something which um, I think people will come across time and time again. Not everybody is um, the, you know making noise about being in the swinger lifestyle and putting their name to it. A lot of people are a lot more discreet, which is perfectly understandable. But very often I find that they, these are the people who say, look, we can't disclose who we are. We can't share pictures, but what we can do is is move to a different platform is move is you know meet for a vanilla date and then put things out on the table because they know they're not going to get anywhere unless they do that um another question i was asked is do verifications mean red flags or green lights for me the more verifications the better i am going to do a bit of more of a deep dive into this topic um for you all because i think it's something that's really interesting i really want to dive into it now but my time is almost up Thank you so much for joining me tonight, everybody. I know.